Ripple XRP, so the SEC is causing chaos yet again, as they usually do. They are rejecting Ripple's claims and they're saying that Ripple is wrong. So in my previous video, I spoke about what Ripple has actually said in relation to their reply to the SEC's motion to compel. So we're going to take a look at that, see what the SEC have said about Ripple. We're also going to be having a look at some crypto cohesive regulation and what they're going to be planning in Europe. Pretty big news. And we have the AI and CBDCs will be the future. We have a bit more news as well that we will be talking about for today. And of course, the price action for XRP coin. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So first things first, let me update you on the lawsuit. So you'll see over here that the SEC has said that Ripple is wrong and that the SEC rejects Ripple's baseless claims. So it seems like as if this never ended saga just keeps on going. So the SEC has rejected Ripple's objections to its demands for financial statements and sales contracts, calling them baseless and crucial to determining penalties and preventing future violations. As we know, the SEC has asked for a lot more information from Ripple in relation to their financial statements and also the post complaints as well. However, Ripple are deeming that not to be necessary information, which I personally also think is correct, but the SEC think otherwise. So the SEC is doubling down on its pursuit of remedies, arguing that post complaint information is essential for crafting appropriate sanctions. So we obviously have the SEC disagreeing, we have Ripple disagreeing. Now, this is very important because when it comes to the remedies related discovery period, they obviously need to make some sort of agreement, right, as to how they're going to remedy this lawsuit action. That's going to be taking place on the 12th of February. And so if we're seeing both of these parties essentially saying, well, no, you are wrong and no, you're wrong, then we are nowhere near close to that. And it says over here that Ripple had previously been objected to the SEC's request for its audited financial statements. We know, I think they wanted somewhere around about 2022 to 2023 for their financial statements, which obviously doesn't deem as necessary because that is way beyond the scope of the lawsuit that they were actually looking into. And Ripple said it was claiming that it was irrelevant to the case, which I also agree with as well. However, the SEC counters that a defendant's financial health is standard in calculating penalties, citing legal precedent. And very unfortunate, I mean, Ripple has already been hit with a penalty, I think, in terms of actually taking this lawsuit case ahead and they've had to pay so much money and also time as well. So Ripple argues that the SEC's requests are untimely and cites the initial April 2021 scheduling order as contemplating only one discovery period. Ripple is wrong. Subsequent de developments have been made clear that this initial order was not the last word on discovery. As Ripple notes, it served an expert report relating to remedies during fact discovery. And not only that, but Ripple's argument that information about post-complaint institutional sales is immat immaterial. And they said, the SEC, that examining these contracts is vital to assess the likelihood of future violations and ensures Ripple adheres to the court's order and that the NCC emphasizes its right to gather relevant information. So what can we gather from all of the information that we have of now? Well, it seems like if both parties, the SEC and Ripple, are not coming to terms with what actually has been put on the table in terms of the right to access all of this information. So it seems like if we are pretty much nowhere closer to where we were before. Very unfortunate case because we just have this lawsuit essentially looming over us now and just being delayed again. But I do think that the SEC is being very much unreasonable here for the reasons that I have stated in their request for the irrelevant information, which they again deem relevant. So we have crypto needs cohesive regulation, a look at Europe's Mika. So we know that US is pretty much still behind, but some good news from Europe is that they are essentially trying to make it more collaborative. So it says that it's crucial to foster collaboration and innovation with this regulatory framework and that Europe's sweeping crypto standards that come into force for this year, allowing companies to harmonize their offerings across all 27 member countries so this is pretty big because we're going to have many of these countries being involved with it and that the initiative could potentially serve as a blueprint for other jurisdictions around the globe. As of now, Mika stands as a beacon of possibility for harmonizing crypto regulations on an international scale. So we could potentially be seeing this actually being utilized first. And then of course, other countries around the globe may actually foster this framework as well. And so it could be setting the pave up and that the new regulation emphasizes transparency, disclosure, authorization, and supervision, all of which hold significant weight. 
as we know when it comes to crypto in general transparency and disclosure is obviously two very important factors when it comes to presenting the information so good on europe for actually taking that initiative now we have over here that ai and cbdc's is going to be our future i definitely think that ai has been a massive player i mean in the past two years you know we've seen the development of many things for example not only with robotics but also in terms of other things like chat ai bots and that has been utilized quite a lot also cbdc's as well it is going to change the way that we actually make our payments for both wholesale and retail so let's take a look at this Countries exploring the use of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs can now access a virtual guide by the International Monetary Fund. The guide will cover areas like interoperability, financial inclusion and how to onboard businesses. Oh, we took uh, the pulse, uh, how many countries are engaging with uh, CBDCs? Over 110 of our members are at some stage of engagement, some quite advanced, some still are at the point of uh, exploration. The guide was launched at an anniversary event of IMF's Regional Training Center. The center provides government officials with training on economic and financial issues. Singapore's Central Bank Chief Ravi Menon also spoke at the event. There, he outlined risks in today's world and how the centre plays a key role in helping member countries with capacity development. Geoeconomic fragmentation, climate change and nature loss, and technological disruption, especially with the advent of artificial intelligence. These are multifaceted issues that require mobilizing and harnessing cross-disciplinary knowledge and expertise. It's no longer purely in the realm of economics. And obviously with that, they are going to be assessing the risks as well as the benefits. It is pretty much in the beginning stages, but they will be laying the foundation for that. And as you heard over there from the IMF Managing Director, we have the figure of 110 of these countries are actively participating in the CBDCs. So we are going to be seeing that development coming in very soon. And it seems like as if we're just getting started for that. Again, some big themes and topics, AI and CBDCs, don't let that one go off of your radar. So we have over here from Lyft Capital talking about the key words and phrases that Ripple XRP is often used as. We have a global stablecoin, world bridge currency, stablecoin for cross-border payments. Whatever they want to call it, XRP will rise out the ashes. Now it is important to note that currently XRP is not classed as a stable coin. It's not a stable coin at all. Now it is planning to be a stable coin. Maybe in the future there could be a possibility. Brad Garlinghouse hasn't said when that could potentially come out and he hasn't really given that much information but there have been a lot of speculation that XRP could be that stable coin. We have heard of it obviously being that world bridge currency. Now could it be far-fetched? Well as of now we could we do know that XRP can be used as a bridge currency but whether it will be the world bridge currency is obviously a very big disparity and that is a very bold claim to make but it can be used in terms of cross-border payments and where it comes from is this cbdc's paper so you'll see over here we have it from the world bank and that is the reason as to why this is important a lot of these connections are often made with ripple xrp and so it's very important to know what they're actually calling the digital asset because you have to know what you hold so we have some advice on chad steingraber over here and he says i'm trying to show you this crypto market of today is no longer the market you once knew you have to change your mindset. The buyers coming are not your friends, they are monsters. As with anything, when people tell you to sell your digital asset, you shouldn't listen to them, you should only listen to your own advice. Also, not only just going with your gut feeling, but making sure that you know and you are informed of what you are holding in terms of the research. What I mean research, not only is it going to be technical analysis, but also the utility of the coin, where you think it could potentially go. Look at the certain developments and partnerships that they have, and also look at the macroeconomic environment as well. So what's going on? You know, we have things like the elections coming up this year, which is a pretty big one. So how is that also going to affect your investment and your risk to reward ratio? Because we all have a different size of that and in terms of how much you're going to be investing if somebody tells you to sell this specific digital asset well you shouldn't really go with the herd always make your own opinions up with the research that you do and from the gold telegraph we do have some breaking news qatar has now delayed the lng cargoes to south europe 
amid the Red Sea crisis, one of the world's biggest liquefied natural gas exporters. And so in relation to this, we know that there is the conflict going on in the Red Sea now. I think it has been happening for roughly around about one to two weeks. So there's obviously going to be delays in shipment and it's going to be disrupting the supply chain due to that conflict. So what we're going to potentially be seeing are shipping costs just increase and that's how it is going to affect us. Let's see how long this Red Sea conflict will obviously last for. Now the price action for XRP coin, we are currently trading at 0.5095. For the one day chart, we are down by 1.31% and we are down by 21.85% on the 24 hour volume. We are trading at $790.8 million. So in the earlier hours of the morning, we were actually trading at 0.5149. We have taken our first dip to 0.5096. Then we were able to come back up to 0.5135. Our second pretty big dip was to 0.5077. On the seven day chart, we are down by 9.47%. Again, a pretty big impact that XRP coin has taken. We had our first dip of the week to 0.5262. And then we had our second massive dip to 0.5017. Now in between, we did actually recover quite nicely to 55 cents to 0.5529. Now I wanna see XRP coin get to the 53 to 55 cent range. It shouldn't really be that hard to do. I mean, on the 24 hour volume, yes, we are down by 23.76%, but even if we can remain just within that 52 cent mark, that would be pretty good and show some sort of stability for XRP. I don't want it to retrace back to 40 cents, but if there is bearish sentiment, we could potentially see that happening. On the one month chart, we are down by 18.84%. Again, quite a lot, it's just changed to 20.4% now. So you'll see over here, we have that massive drop. But it is important to note that we were pretty much at higher levels back in early January, where we were at 63 cents. Of course, that was in the anticipation of the spot Bitcoin ETS. I think because now the market isn't really doing that well, a lot of things did retrace and pulled back after we had that approval. I mean, Bitcoin is hovering at 40K. It was at 38K just a few days ago. And so whilst it is still up, we have seen that massive retracement and also with other coins too, before heading to the 53 to 55 cent range. Guys, if you want daily Ripple XRP coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.